journalist Gary Fox of Create and Make, and tonight we're going to talk about analyzing those uh, fuzz stomp pedals that we've been creating, the uh, circuits. But what we're really interested in analyzing is to find out what frequencies they're producing, how much uh, distortion they're producing as far as uh, harmonic frequencies. And that took a little bit of work. So uh, I'm going to show you how I go about doing it in this this particular video. In the next video, we'll look at a whole bunch of uh, the results. We're going to look at a few results tonight. Okay, what I had to do first was run QUCS. So we'll run that right now. And uh, what we're going to run, we're going to run a... Uh, one that I used to test out my program that you're going to see in just a minute. And what I did was I created a square wave. And what I did with that square wave was that I ran the uh, signal for one millisecond. And the square wave is on for a half a millisecond and off for a half a millisecond. So in other words, I ran one cycle. And during that time, I did 10,001 points. The one is because you start the thing and then you stop it. So you're actually going to do one extra point there. And uh, so we will run this simulation right now and see what we get. And we get an output there that uh, is plus a half a vote and goes back down to zero. And when we do that, uh, we now know what the waveform looks like. And this is called the time domain. Give you a big word right here. Because time is in the, uh, the x-axis right here. But what we're really interested in is the frequency components of that. So what I have to do, I have to get this into some form and I can read it. And it took a little bit of time to find out how to do that in QUCS. And what you do is that you right click on the uh, the graph that you're wanting to do. And you do an export to uh, CVS. And I'm going to put this thing in a file. And where I'm sticking this in programming. And I call this stuff CVS files. CSV files. I'm sorry. I'm not selling a pharmacy here. And we're going to call this particular one square wave, square wave test. I already have a square wave. So square wave test one. And let's do it SQ. So it's real similar. You'll see why I'm doing it this way in just a minute. And I will save that. Okay, now we've got it out of uh, QUC, QUCS. So, we're ready to close that. Okay. What I did then was, I ran a program. And I had to write that program. And there are several reasons I had to do that. So, we'll look at this file that we just now got. Square wave test 1. Okay, there's a problem with the way that this thing's done. I'm going to open it in equivalent to notepad. Unfortunately, instead of using commas, uh, the writers of uh, QUCS chose to use semicolons. And if I try to import that into, uh, into Libra Calc, which is equivalent to Excel, uh, that will end up
looks like it's working now. Uh, before it didn't want to uh, do that. Uh, okay, well, there may be a reason for this. Uh, that was a, I opened up the correct one. For some reason, I had problems with that before. Uh, it may be something that's got since got corrected on the updates. So it worked, but it was not going to give me the information I needed because that still is just going to give me the uh, square wave. So what I need to do was I needed to uh, look at it first by calculating what all the coefficients are for all the different sine, uh, sine waves. So now we're going to look at views and I'm just going to do the old one and then we're going to run this this new one here in just a minute so I open this and you see that with the square wave this is the standard square wave I got uh, all the odd harmonics just like we normally do just like we did when we did it with uh, audacity but I also I uh, wanted to check and make sure that I could rebuild the graph. And so you see that the green, the black is the uh, rebuild, and the red was what the original waveform was. Again, I only did 100, 100 uh, harmonics on this one. I stopped at 100. So... We got exactly the same result we did back when we were generating it ourselves by generating it just from sine waves using a formula. And that's pretty good. Uh, it worked. And then I also did it a little different way. And I didn't expand this one up. But I still got the same result. The difference was that this one uses both sines and cosines. And this one uses the absolute value and then shifts the phase. However, there is no phase shift in this, so it works real well. Uh, I think I still have a little problem with my program in that area, by the way. So that's what we were, I was doing. Okay, when I'm looking at it, at this graph right here, whereas the first graph, we called it the time domain, this is called the frequency domain. I may name this video freaking out, but I doubt it. Nobody would know what I'm talking about. And uh, let's look at something. We're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to go into this graph right here. And right now I've got it limited to uh, 0 0.0001. Let's take it down to a little bit more. And uh, this one still works. We don't see any any noise coming in there. Let's go ahead and take that to uh, auto. And you see that we got some noise down here, but we're down at 10 to the minus 16th. And uh, the reason for that is that we're getting at the limits of where the computer can calculate. So it throws some garbage in there. That's why I limited all of them to... Uh, 10 to the minus 3 when we get into actually talk, talking about uh, talking about the actual waveforms that we generated. Okay, I showed you the first step of how I did this. I'll show you now. We'll go ahead and go through the second step. Okay, I actually wrote a program and I'm going to have to call this thing square wave test 2. We'll just call square wave test one. And that's going to be the one that we're going to look at. So I have to comment this thing out and then uncomment this one. And I'm going to go past 100. I'm going to go to 1,000 uh, harmonics this time. And we're going to go ahead and run this program. So I'll save it. And now I'll run it. And it's going to take a little time to run. You see, it's going to count all the way up to 10,000 here. And 
I'm not real sure what all flipped up right there. That kind of concerns me. I may fall flat on my behind on this. Alright, it says it's done. So now, I will have generated a whole bunch of other ones. I got the coefficients and the uh, square wave test. We're going to go now into we save this. We can exit it. We can exit this. We're going to copy this because I'm lazy. <laughs> And we got exactly the same graph we had before. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're going to delete these. And we're going to import some new data. And we're now using views. So we will import the data called square wave test coefficient. And you see that it goes way out there now. And if I go to uh, we'll set this thing to auto. And you can see that it, it goes way on out there to, let me input one more piece of data even though we don't need it quite yet. And I'll do the rebuild. Okay. Uh, it goes way on out there. I have to close this so we can see it. To, t to a thousand. So we've got a thousand harmonics. You see they don't start, they don't go down very much, very quickly once they get on out there. So we should have more of an ideal wave and we do. You see we're a lot closer to what the original wave is. If I uh, take this, this is the original. Let's turn off our simulation real quick. That's what the original looked like. And now if we uh, do our other one, it looks real close, except we have these little bitty spikes on the end. But they're a whole lot smaller than they were when we did it only to 100. 100 har uh, yeah, the 100th harmonic. When we went to the 1,000th harmonic, we're getting a much closer to the original waveform. Okay, and the point being, this is kind of a, a generalization. The sharper the waveform is, the higher the harmonics it requires to uh, to actually uh, match it up, to actually model it from the frequency domain into the time domain. Uh, okay, you've seen the whole process of how I go about generating these. In the uh, next video, we're going to look at the uh, ones that that I generated from QUCS and uh, of those fuzz boxes or stomp pedals and uh, it'll be a whole lot easier and we're just going to look at the pictures on that one we're not going to uh, go through all of this stuff I just went through okay in the case of the program uh, if anybody wants it uh, if you email me uh, on my website uh, I will reference this video and and basically, just send me an email, and I will email you the uh, the program that I use, the Python program. I uh, probably need to clean it up a little more to make it uh, a little more easy for somebody to understand. 
Uh, what the Python program did was, let's see if we can pull it back up. It's called Fourier. What it does first, it reads in a CSV file since it's a non-standard. Second thing it does, and it stuffs those into a uh, list, they call it. Once it stuffs those into a list, which is what it's doing right here, uh, it then closes that file, and then it creates a readable copy of the CSV file, and uh, turns out I don't do a lot with that particular one. Yeah, actually I do. Uh, I create a, a I'm not sure I do. It creates a, okay, it creates the uh, CSV. Then what it does is it starts doing the uh, harmonics. It starts calculating what the harmonics are. And the way that's done is you multiply the wave times the uh, harmonic wave. And you do both the sine and the cosine. And then we stuff those into uh, some strings. And we calculate what the total is for each one of those. So we have to do, we have to count up to 10,000. And then we loop and then we do the next time. Uh, then we do the next one and so on and so forth. Uh, and then we create the coefficients CSV file. And then I re rebuild the file. I rebuilt the file to make sure that I was calculating it correctly. And at the very beginning I was not. And I actually started out troubleshooting this thing. I did a pure sine wave. Then later on I did the square wave, which is what we just did. And the reason for doing that was to make sure that uh, I had some waves that I knew what was supposed to be and how they were supposed to look and I was able to troubleshoot what happened in my program. And I had a few errors within the program. A lot of times it had to do with not looping it these loops correctly. Anyhow, that's basically the uh, how I'm getting it done and I had to do a little bit of stressing and straining. I created my own tool to do this and it's not a deal there where I'm trying to brag about doing my own tool. It's basically sometimes what it takes to really understand stuff. I have my own reasons for what I'm going to be doing with this tool later on and you'll be seeing that. Appreciate you listening. This is Gary Fox of Great Make. I hope you got something out of this. This one was a little bit complicated. Probably a little bit hard to follow. Thank you.